Okay, folks, good evening. It's uh, Paul from the Ransom Art Channel here, and I'm just um, starting my live stream for eight o'clock now. So um, nice, uh, nice to see anybody joining us. That'd be lovely if you could just sign in and say hi. That would be great. Just let me know you're you're kind of broadcasting while I'm broadcasting, and you can see what I'm doing here. So yeah, you can just sign in and say hi. Hi, Sasha. Hi, Michael. Good evening to you. It's nice to see you in a sort of funny sort of way. Can't really see you, obviously, but welcome to the, the live stream tonight. Um, I've got my camera sort, sort of prepped today. If you were just watching before I turn the, the microphone on, you saw me just doing a little bit of preparation there. Now, this is just uh, it's one of my, my DIY canvases I'm using here. Um, it's uh, it's one that's been actually prepared by myself. Hey, it's actually not canvas, it's actually paper. If I bend the edge of it a little bit, you can just see the corner of it bending there. Um, so is this kind of a time delay between me doing something and you hearing it and responding? There could be some few minutes. <laughs> so it's all a bit disjointed, but um, this is actually paper. That I'm painting on, and it's actually good old fashioned lining paper. I buy a roll of lining paper for a few pounds, about fiber, and then I just give it a coat of acrylic, acrylic white or black, but anything to kind of seal it up and make it waterproof. That's that's the main thing. You've got to try and make it oil proof, waterproof. Um, So the idea is, is to actually make it so that you can actually paint on this without the oil sinking in. Um, it was the main thing behind what Bob designed was that you could paint wet on wet. So you start with a wet oil based primer and then you can add in more colors on top of it and blend them together. So you definitely don't want your canvas drying out. And one of the things I know that happens quite often is when people start using a canvas and they're not quite sure um, of how good the quality is and sometimes they put liquid clear or liquid white onto it and start painting only to find out after sort of five or ten minutes that the canvas has started to dry and they're running into trouble trying to blend colors so the problem here is that they can't actually make things move properly and that is because the canvas hasn't been primed properly. It's, it's, it hasn't had a couple of good coats of primer. So I always test the edges of my canvas. So up here, where there's a sort of a piece of canvas folded around the edge, I put a little bit of liquid white or liquid clear on the edge. And um, that way I can, I can sort of check it. So there's always a little bit of canvas down the side you can kind of get to. And I just dab a little bit on there. And that helps the canvas be tested. And I leave it for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I come back and I, I just touch it with my finger. And if, if it's still wet, then I know that I'm probably OK. If it started to dry out and it looks powdery, then I know that the quality isn't there and I need to coat it again. So the very first thing I put on my canvas was some of this. I hope we can get that in focus. Um, it's some liquid clear. and Again, I know that people have problems with this. Um, it's like runny honey. And one of the biggest problems folk have is they just put on too much. Um, and that's going to be a causing you a big problem because then your canvas is soaking wet. It's got too much liquid clear on it. And then you struggle because then you add paint on top of it and the whole canvas just becomes wetter and wetter and more and more soggy. So, just to decide if, if you can if you can see uh, and hear me okay, could you just give me a, a thumbs up or a comment just to let me know in case my microphone is not picking up properly? Great, thank you, Michael. That's good. Right. 
least I'm not talking to myself, but it wouldn't be the first time I find myself talking to myself. So that's grand. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Right. OK. So I put my liquid clear on and I scrubbed it in real thin. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Put on some liquid clear. And if you're not 100 percent sure, pick up a piece of kitchen towel, a bit of um, the old paper towel here, and then just give it a gentle blotting off just to make sure that you remove any surplus on there. But the other test um, I like to use, I actually use my finger and I actually, I know it's got, this has got paint on it as well, but I actually just swirl it around on the surface. And I want to make sure I can't see a, a real sort of trail left on it. Um, I think you can just about see a trail where my finger went through liquid clear. Um, you really shouldn't see very much. If you see what looks like the garden slug has been across your canvas, in other words, a thick trail, then you know for sure that you've uh, put on too much. And you can just about see here just a little suggestion. So that's just about as much as my canvas needs. If I could see it any more than that, I would take a paper towel and I would wipe it off. So that's about right. But any more than that, you're going to be in trouble. So let's wipe that out. Okay. And I know that Michael and I have painted together before when we lived closer to, to where we are now. And um, you'll probably confirm that I used to spend several minutes just preparing canvases. I, before I even put a drop of paint on it, I would always take my time to prep my canvases properly, simply because once you start a painting, if, if, if your prep is bad, it doesn't matter how good a painting you do, you're, you're going to be in kind of kicking yourself all the way through. So always double check your canvases. Right. Let's get painting. Let's let's put some some paint on this canvas and have a look and see what we've got. So here's my palette. My palette for tonight. You're getting lots of strange reflections of me. But here's my palette. And as you see, I've got a, a vast selection of colour. I've got some cadmium yellow and white. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using very little of the cadmium yellow, just a little tiny bit. But almost 99.9% .9 of this is actually the paint that's on here and a little bit of white just to work with. So that's what I'm going to be painting with today. So it's a fun little painting. It's um, one we used to use quite a lot. And my first thing to do is to actually decide where my horizon line is going to be. And I, and I roughly want to take about maybe just over a third. So I put my, I put a little bit of white on the corner of my fan brush there, just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to just literally, I use my finger like a peg, like that. Okay, just watching the monitor. So I use my finger like a peg, and that way I can put it against the bottom of my canvas. And I can just run my brush backwards and forwards. It kind of makes me a something of a horizon line there. So it gives me an idea roughly roughly where my sky is. It doesn't have to be that neat and tidy. You can you can be quite rough and ready with it. So if it looks a little bit if it looks a little bit wonky it's actually not it's just my camera is maybe not sitting perfectly level. I almost don't want to touch it because I know as soon as I touch it, it's going to go completely skew if so. Um, okay. So this is going to be a seascape um, and kind of like a nighttime seascape. So I'm going to have some something bright up here, maybe some a moon, and we're going to cast some clouds across here. And then we're going to get into a seascape in this area here. So I'm just going to go into a little bit of Titanium white, very, very little, very little. So 
So I put on the smallest amount of white on my brush, really small. I mean, don't overdo it. And up, kind of up here in this third, that's roughly that's roughly where I want my my bright spot to be. So I'm going to literally just tap in. This sort of area can have a nice, nice kind of a glow. I'm just checking my monitor over my shoulder, I can look at my screen and see how bright that looks. It looks a little bit fluorescent. I'm going to just keep the colors a little bit. I'm not sure if that's any any better. I might just click off click off one of my lights as well. There you go. I've actually turned off one of my one of my big overhead lights here. I don't think it's doing my painting any good. I've been working hard to try and find a new webcam, but right now, webcams, well, you'd have you'd have more luck getting chicken's teeth, I'm afraid. The webcams are in such short supply. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of work out from this this bright spot. I'm just tapping it. I kind of like this sort of mottled effect I'm getting on here. But the more you tap it, the more mottled it gets. Give my, my brush a bit of a dry clean. Remove some of that surplus paint from my brush, and I'm just going to lightly blend this out. I just want to kind of create a little bit of a glow in the sky here, so nothing too bright, nothing too uh, too leery. Okay, and one of my favorite things to paint with is my finger. And I'm going to just put a little bit of moonlight. And my top tip for that is start out a bit smaller than you think you need it. It'll grow on you. Next thing you know, it'll be kind of out here. So it'll be a bit too big. And I've got this look a bit misty. So I'm just going to do small circles. Looks that looks way too bright on my monitor. So I'm thinking it probably is a little bit bright on yours. So I'm gonna literally just just give that a few little flicks. And that'll just set my a little bit of moon up. In the sky, some little marks there. I don't like tap those out. Okay. So there's my my little moon glow, and as you can see, I'm painting with a the bluish background here. It's actually um, mountain mix is the color I'm using under here. So 
quite a nice color to use. It's quite quite inky. It's quite blue as well, so it's quite nice to, to use. Now, I'm going to go back to using my fan brush, and I know folk have a lot of problems painting clouds, and I'm going to do you one of the kind of the easiest clouds that I can think to do. And it's one where you don't actually have much control of the brush. And that sounds a little bit odd. But basically, I'm going to just kind of put on a cloud that sort of wraps around this moon. And, and I'm going to just twirl the brush. I'm, I'm literally going to just let the brush bounce and do its own thing here. And you might be surprised at just how, how effective that can be. I'm just twisting the brush, let it kind of bounce and do its own thing. So you see it this kind of slightly crazy looking inner edge here. And and I want to keep that bright inner edge, but it's the back. It's this piece in here that I want to lose. I want to, to tap that out. But it looks like my, my moon is illuminating the edge of the cloud here. I'm just going to really give that a real firm tap. Now twirl. So I just, I just want to lose this back edge. I just want it to kind of get progressively darker. My little webcam is struggling to do the justice to this painting. It's seeing everything a bit too bright. Um, but it isn't actually a webcam. It's actually my mobile phone. But our webcam that we did have, when I finally managed to get one, it lasted about a week before it conked out and went back. And of course, by the time, <laughs> time that went back and I said, and I get a replacement, and um, there was the sort of stunned silence on the other end, and they said yes when they come in, and um, I was told that could be sometime in the new year. So I press ganged my my smartphone and kind of tricked it into behaving like a webcam. So you see I've got this lovely brighter inner edge, and I kind of get it to kind of fade away as it works away from the from the moon. And just in case you thought it was a fluke, I like to throw another one on there. Again, I'm just thinking about letting the brush. And it's the edge that's nearest the moon that I want to be brightest. And just kind of let the brush bounce around. Really don't have to do too much. Try not to follow the shape too closely either. There's a you know, you can end up kind of creating almost an identical pattern. So I, I deliberately change the angle a little bit. And hopefully you're not getting too much glare from the the lights. So again, I'm going to leave that inner edge. I'm not going to touch that at all. Yeah, it's good. It's looking quite, it's looking quite realistic, isn't it? I don't know why I sound so shocked. Um, the funny thing is, I probably painted this painting a couple hundred times. No kidding. That's that's not an exaggeration. And my partner Terry and I, when when we used to do craft shows, she would she would start the paintings off, and she would generally start off with a lovely painting called the Purple Waterfall, and we'd have the canvases all set up in advance, and and she would paint that, and it would get a a nice response from people watching, and they quite often wanted another painting straight afterwards, and we were sometimes stuck to get a painting. Really quickly. 
I'm going to link these two together. They look a bit too kind of even, so I'm going to I'm going to pull one into the other here. There we go. A bit dangerous here. There we go. So what used to happen is that Terry would start off with this lovely purple waterfall painting, and if we had a really good audience watching, then we kind of needed to get another painting up quickly. And I used to throw up a black canvas like this one, and I would look at the palette and see whatever Terry had left for me. And whatever was on the palette is what I painted with. If it was browns and blues or greens and yellows, I used to just plonk that on the canvas and then paint this painting on top. So sometimes you have blue seascapes. I've done green seascapes, pink seascapes. You name it, I did it in all the kind of colors. It just depended what was left on the palette when I picked it up. So I literally have done this painting so, so many times. And it's just a great fun picture. It is so much fun to do. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of um, light right down on this horizon here. I almost want like a little cloud. I really don't want it to be too bright, though. But it's showing up very bright on the camera. So you see, actually, yeah, they kind of, and that. You're right, they're, they're fun to do. I mean, I, I really am not trying too hard to do this. I mean, I, I know I said I've painted this, I can't remember, hundreds of times, but you can see by my brush strokes, I'm being really kind of crazy with it. I am really not trying too hard to do a shape. I'm, I'm just kind of literally letting the brush bounce around. And, and I, I think that's probably one of the things that I, I learned about painting. Um, had a lovely instructor, bless him, Daryl. He was a amazing guy, um, and he came comes from a little place called Little Rock, Arkansas. He was one of Bob's original teacher trainers from years back, and I used to struggle. I used to struggle with my paintings a lot, and I used to say to him, Daryl. You never seem to struggle with your paintings because he wouldn't talk very much. He would just stand there and paint. He'd say a couple of words in a very slow, drawn out sort of Arkansas accent. And nothing seemed to phase him. And I asked him one day, I said, Daryl, how, how, how comes you can paint so beautifully and you make it look so easy? And he said, I paint like I don't care. And I said, well, it may look like you don't care, but your paintings say otherwise. I mean, he said, no, he said, if I paint like I cared, he said, I can't paint. I could never paint as good. As soon as I get worried and concerned and start getting too uptight with my paintings, I lose it. So I've always kind of stuck with that. And you can see from my little clouds here, I kind of just throw them on, blend them out, and just let them be. Um, and you'll find that nine times out of 10, you'll do better clouds this way than if you fight and struggle with them. So I think we've done enough little clouds here. I'm just gonna start in on my seascape in here. And I'm, I'm thinking about how the light gets kind of thrown down onto the surface of the sea. So in here's where I'm gonna want my brightest kind of area. It's kind of gonna throw a, a little bit of a funnel of light I'm going to have a nice crashing wave in this area. So I want to just put on a little bit of paint. And I'm going to, I've got a little bit of this dirty white paint here. I'm going to use my palette knife. And I'm going to just pick up, ooh, the tiniest little bit. See if I can get that into focus for you. I am picking up the smallest amount of paint on my knife. I know where my horizon line is. And I'm going to literally just tap. I kind of want the moonlight to be bouncing off the surface of the sea. Um, I'm going to tap. And I'm going to kind of let the paint break up a little bit. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of a close up for you. That looks a bit better. Let's see if I can get in closer than that. There you go. There we are. 
my camera a little bit further that way. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm doing is I'm just using my knife and I'm just I'm just tapping. And I'm leaving little bits of dark here and there. Don't don't overfill this. Just just tap the canvas, it'll give you back what it doesn't want. It'll return it to you. And it's surprising you can get some great texture just tapping. You can create amazing things. Now, all the time in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking about where my big wave is going to be. So I'm sort of kind of not going to over brighten this area. If I'm going to put some foam on a wave, I'm, I'm all the time thinking it's like a game of chess. You've got to keep thinking ahead about what comes next. If I'm going to put a big wave in here, I don't want a great big chunk of white paint right behind it or, or, or the, the illusion of white. So I'm going to be letting my knife run out of paint. And I'm going to allow gaps to get a little bigger as well here because waves further back on the horizon line up here, they're all kind of crushed together. But as they come forward, they start to open out a little bit. Okay. Do a few little. Okay, so I, I think I've got enough background C. And, and if you overdo this, well, you can always pick up the palette knife and, and scrape off the paint. So, like, this is kind of a very nice painting just to play with if you just, just want to get a little bit of exercise, um, get your brush hands working. Um, it's a nice little painting to do. Um, this looks quite sharp to the eye, so I'm going to use my, my one inch brush here and, and no pressure on this brush. I literally want to just pull this across. So I just let it touch and slide. And all it does is it just kind of flattens the paint down a little bit, makes it nice and smooth. Okay. So that's kind of a quick and easy background sky, moon, and a little bit of a seascape. Now, if you just wanted to paint, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wanted to just paint simple seascapes, you could just put a few more waves in here and put a beach on here and call it done. Um, or you could leave it sort of like a, a mysterious looking seascape. But I, I'm actually going to put a little crashing wave in here with a little bit of color in it. I'm just getting a, getting a slurp of my tea here. Um, I can't paint without a cup of tea in my hand. Now, I'm going to have my, my crashing wave coming this direction. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be coming across. I could be going the other direction. Maybe I'll crash it the other direction. Kind of this way. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the shape of my wave. Okay, I'm going to just put an outline on my way so, so I know where I'm going. And, and what I want to know is where is the crest of this wave? And you see I've got a big big chunk of white paint just there that's going to be in my way. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to turn that into my wave. So there's kind of the arch of my wave. And I'm going to just drag this off. And again, I don't want this too straight. I like to have a few nice kind of dips, but the angle wants to be coming down and right about here is going to be the floor of my wave. Okay, so I'm just going to get this kind of crashing down. So I'm, I'm kind of measuring out how much room to allow, and then that gives me enough room here for a little bit of a beach. And this is where the area where the paint where the wave just crashes over. So I don't want to come in too too close to the top here. I want to come in just a little bit lower and and just drop on. I used to call it this I used to call this shape like a horse's saddle here. 
okay so that's where my wave is going to be crashing over okay so the waves coming this way okay so this is kind of a nice a nice little sketch to draw a wave if if ever you're not sure about waves if you can just remember this shape a wiggly wiggly shape a nice dropped angle and then this dropped area in here that's kind of useful that's kind of a nice a nice sort of template for Hi Peter, no problem. Sorry, <laughs> Pete's joined us here. It's okay, Peter. It's a nice you join join us. Um, so yeah, as I said, this is kind of like my template for a wave. If I get this kind of shape, then I'm almost guaranteed to get in a, in a good looking wave here. So um, I'm going to just do the little pullover section in here, which is where the wave crashes over, and that's where you want some brightness across the top. And it's here is where I wanted to make sure I didn't have too much black paint. So this is the bit where I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of white. Just pull it through. Now it doesn't have to be pure white. In fact, I rarely ever paint with pure white color. And there's a reason for that. It's because if I put on pure white, and then I want to add a little sparkle to it. I've used up my brightest option too early, too soon. So if I go in with a color which is a little bit less than than pure, it means that I can I can put on a nice wave, say, and then later on if I want to come back and just add that little little ping of light, that little spark, that little do as Bob would say, I still got the option. Okay. So now I'm going to go and paint this wave and see how it crashes over. So I'm going to go along the top here and I'm leaning into the painting here. I'm going to press into it and you want to get that nice little click going. Okay. And I'm going to go across the top again and you want to just overlap that previous stroke, but see how I kind of get off. Okay. The trick is not to piddle around with this too much and go back over it. I think I'm going to go across the top. And you see just in three strokes there, I got kind of the start of a nice crashing wave. And I'm, I'm using the same brush. I haven't reloaded it. And I'm going to just let my wave taper away. So I got a nice sort of crashing wave effect in here. I'm going to put some, some splash and some crash. But I kept a lot of my dark in here. Okay, that's important. Once you start filling this up with uh, with foam and things, then you can't add a nice splash effect around it. Okay, you've lost the opportunity. Um, this is going to be the eye of my wave, and there's quite a lot of paint in here. If you look at the end of my finger, you can see it's pretty well coated. Um, I like to take out some of the surplus, so I've got I've got a little baby wipe here, and what I'm going to do is going to clean out the eye a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to take off too much. If I take out too much color, then when I do the next stage, instead of getting a nice vibrant color, you kind of end up with a sort of a gray looking eye in your way, so it's not good. So I'm going to just Massage back in a little color here. Okay, so still got plenty of that that blue color coming through from the background. My next my weapon of choice is going to be a, a fill brush. This is a pretty old fill brush. This one's been looks a bit like my head. It's a bit threadbare. Those who've actually met me in person will know that's true. Um, as a magician once said, whilst I might lie to you, I'm going to tell you the truth about it. So <laughs> there's no lie. My hair is pretty, pretty thin. So this is an old brush. I keep my old film brushes for doing seascapes um, because they're just so lovely and bristly and tough. You can, you can kind of stab at the paint with it and you get a really nice effect. So here we go. I'm going to mix up a little bit of white. A little bit of white, let me get low camera, and a little bit 
of my cadmium yellow. And I kind of want a primrose yellow color. Okay. If it's too white, then my painting will just go gray. If it's too yellow, then it will go bright green. So I got to get it right. I got to get it on the money or else it won't look good. And I'm putting on enough paint to do the job. Because you, you really don't want to have to go back into this with a dirty brush and paint again. Okay, so here we go. So I got quite a good amount on my brush. And then the, the brightest part of my wave is going to be right up in the top here. So I'm going to stick my brush in just under that shadow. And I'm going to, I'm pushing the brush down real hard. You can probably see the canvas bending under my brush. And I'm going to work away from that. So that's going to be my brightest point at the very top. I'm going to work away down my wave. And you see I deliberately left this line here. Okay. That, that line there, I nicknamed it the mascara line because that separates the eye of the wave from the crashing part of the wave in the background there. And if you don't have a gap there, then the two just end up running into each other and they look kind of kind of a bit odd. I'm just dry cleaning out my brush again. And I'm gonna blend. And you see I'm I'm blending on just a corner here. Just got a few hairs. And I'm gonna get that right in there. Okay. And the idea is by the time I get down to the base of the wave, there's no more sort of light coming through the water. It should be just dark. Now, as I work away from here, of course, I'm picking up more and more dark color in my brush. So if I go back in up here again, I'm going to contaminate my wave. So this just, just, just to show you. So I've just made that look dark by just kind of going back. So if I go back to the top of my wave too much, I run the risk of losing my transparency. Okay, so I don't want to do any more than that. I'm sure if I do, I'm going to lose it. So I mentioned before that there is, I put it back in, I lost it. There is what's called the floor of the wave. Uh, I'll mark it again. That's roughly the area where, where the beach starts, where the wave is crashing onto. So once it hits this line, water's tending to go back up. It sort of kind of crashes onto the beach with a nice, that nice sort of resounding smashing sound. So I'm going to put some foam on top of here. With that, I like to use my, my fan brush and I use a little pushing action, a little kind of press, get a little kind of pop. Again, I'm going to get my palette, a small amount of paint. Let me see I get it right on that corner. I mean, have a look at that. that. That's gray, isn't it? It's pretty blue gray color. It certainly isn't white. Okay. So my my foam comes down this edge here a little bit. And see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of using the back of the brush. 
and I'm just pressing. Now, this will show up, this phone will show up because of the shadow I've got in the background here. Let me see if I can tweak my, my color settings a little more. That may look better, I'm not sure. I just turned the brightness down on the contrast up a little bit on my camera on my phone. Again, you see I'm just I'm stabbing with the back of my brush. Again, don't be too careful about this. You don't want this to look nice and neat and tidy. This is this is Mother Nature crashing and banging and throwing water about sometimes if i have time i put in i put a nice rock in there i'm not sure i'm going to get time tonight but okay now this is very much like the clouds where we we had a bright edge on the cloud and then we had a shadow behind it here I'm, i want a shadow again so i'll go back to my nice brush and right in here i'm going to I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. It doesn't want to be too bright. And if we're lucky in that area, we can even put some more foam. So just tickle this wave, just tickle it. Be careful in this area. You don't want to do too much damage to the wave there. So you've got to be a little careful. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I'm getting kind of a nice looking wave. Do I still get thumbs up? I hope, I hope folks are still there. It's probably with this live stream malarkey is you, you be talking to yourself and there's no one there. <laughs> the world's gone. It's still saying I'm live, so that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to throw in a little bit more of a, another little bit of foam in here. Is a second little piece. It's really like doing those clouds, isn't it? Okay. That took an easy little wave there. And oh, good. We're getting thumbs up. That's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this area in here. I want to think about how the wave shape goes. And again, this is another kind of key part of, of a wave. It's, it's to understand how the shape goes. Um, this part of my wave is actually back in the center. And this piece is the, the forward edge of the wave. So this is actually inside of the main wave. And what I want to do is I want to actually create the shape of the water now in here. If I do this with my brush. Here the wave is very steep. You can see that, okay. I'm kind of doing a curl, okay. Let me get a little bit closer. So in here is, is a tight C shape, like the water is rising steeply. Over here it's rising a little less steeply, okay. By the time you get to over here, it's rising less steeply again. And then by the time you get to the other side over here, it's starting to really flatten off. Okay, so that's what you've got to remember when we're painting waves is is, to, is this change of angle here. So I'm going to just use my fan brush. I'm going to repair some of my scratches that I did. And what I'm doing is I'm just using this little piece of paint that was here that I put in just for the suggestion of where the beach was going to be. I'm just pulling that up and I'm curling it round. Curl it up. And I'll flatten it off.
and again i'm trying to save a little bit of that that shadow there at the top edge of my wave i might just have to pull out just a little bit there i'm just a little bit too close i was so close i can i can barely see over the top of my canvas here i'm, I'm kind of trying to paint around my phone you can see i've almost got this painting on my lap right now there's my there's my that's my legs there so um let's see if i can slide it down a little bit yeah, that's pretty good so you see i've managed to preserve this sort of shape here and you can go you know you can get you can get kind of crazy in this area here adding in detail and the like you can really kind of about it so i'm just going to put a little bit more of that foam on my wave and one place you always get a little bit of kind of a kick up remember i took i, I kind of pinched a little bit of that foam from the background there i'm going to just tap in just the suggestion of a little bit of foam here and don't let this get too big it has a tendency to kind of get away from you and that looks like a little wave that's kind of crashing over can you see there's a little mini wave in there looks like one of these ones but a little mini fella that was a bit of luck wasn't that i kind of like almost like i planned it maybe maybe that wave there's kind of kind of crashing through i'm just kind of making this up as i go along here just so kind of as i see it i'm doing it kind of and i don't get too too tied up in knots over this i kind of if i see something and i think it's working well i'll, I'll go with it and if it doesn't then, I, then i'll change it i'm just gonna you can see that i might just be just out of shot there i might just be on the edge of my camera yeah i'm just gonna tap out the base of these little bits of wave I like this little shadow in here. I'm going to keep that little shadow. Same as this fella in here. I like that little shadow. Maybe I want a few little sparklers in here. So that's bright. That's really bright as well. Maybe a little too bright. I think what I do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to post um, a photograph of this little wave as a still at the very end of this live demo because it's coming out on my screen here as being almost like fluorescent fluorescent white. It's not that bright. It's actually much less bright than that. Yeah, now you can sort of, you can start to see a little bit more of the color that's actually in the wave there. It's um, it didn't have a, it didn't have a lot of color in it on that other previous focus, but but now you can kind of see a little bit more of the the shape of the wave here I've got. So I may even just throw up a couple of little. I'm just letting I'm just letting my brush do the work for me. It's kind of an old scratchy fan brush. This is one I've worn out many moons ago. And I'm kind of just letting the paint just do its own thing here. Now that kind of finishes off my wave quite nicely. And now I, I kind of want something of a beach in here. Um, now I know this technique kind of gets people legged over a little bit. It's using a palette knife. Um, people find palette knives difficult to use um i won't tell you my vincent van gogh joke but apparently he used to have trouble using a palette knife as well and someone told him to sleep with it under his pillow and they said if you sleep with it every night by the end of the week you'll be much better at using it and he did and the following morning he got up and cut his ear off that's my only art joke i use it sparingly 
now you know why. Um, so I've just wiped off my palette knife and I pulled my paint out flat. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. I'm going to select it, this. And that's very fine, Sasha. Um, I pull my paint down flat. And the idea here is, is that you're going to pick up a little roll of paint. I can't emphasize this bit enough either. You cannot pick up a little roll of paint when your ball is in a, when your paint is in a chunk like that. You just can't do an even roll of paint. So you have to pull it down flat, slide the knife in. And what I'm looking for is an even roll of paint. Can I get that kind of on edge there for you, like a little bump of paint? Okay. And and I'm going to kind of work high, from from high to low. So I'm going to start kind of over in here. And, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just rubbing my knife, just rubbing it. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm creating. I'm creating the line, the kind of the surf, where the, let me pull that out a little bit more. This would be where the kind of, oh, I'm going to have to a bit more of the painting. There we go. That's right. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating, um, can you imagine the surf coming up the beach? And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of allowing, I'm using the knife at a bit of an angle with a lot of pressure on it. I'm really bending the knife into the canvas here. And I'm just letting the paint break from the back of the knife here. So you can see I'm kind of creating this sort of thick line of paint. I'm just kind of letting it kind of slop down. And I'm going to do one from the other direction here. Now, that way, the paint was coming off the heel of my knife. This time it's going to come off the toe of my knife, and I got to get the two to meet up. I must—they mustn't miss each other. And that was lucky. I kind of—I managed to hit the other one okay, didn't I? Boy, I think it was Gary Player, who's a golfer. Someone asked about how he managed to play so well. He said, "You know what?" He said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. So I kind of guess that's, see the truth there. The more you practice, the luckier you get. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to pull this back. Because this part of the wave, this part of the wave here, meets up with that part of the beach over there. So I want a long pull back. If you go from here straight up, the wave looks like it's standing on top of the beach. This way, if you pull back, you create the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. That's the only tricky point because it looks like the water's going that way on the beach and yet the wave's going up. So you've got to kind of play with that a little bit. Not always easy to get that angle looking good. I'll tease that out. And you don't always have to finish paintings at the edges, particularly. Um, I quite have what I call lost edges. So my focal point is in this middle section here. Everything lines up through this section. My eye falls from one corner to the opposite sort of side. It kind of goes from this line through to about here. And that's kind of an interesting line through there. I really don't want anybody looking at the edges, particularly because the edges are places for the eye to escape. So if you can keep everybody looking at the middle of your painting, then you've done a good job with it. Okay, this looks a little kind of straight through here, so I'm gonna just throw in, I'll do another one of those paint like you don't care moments. Maybe, maybe I'll just throw a couple of little 
dumpy bits on there. It's a little bit neat and tidy. I'm just going to rough it up a little bit. So did I miss anything on my painting? If, if I if I got everything in that I should put into a moonlit seascape? Okay, um, what I did, Michael, is um, I literally just coated this with some black gesso. Um, let me just grab that. Hold on. Okay. That's that's what I put on to start with, just black gesso. Um, that should read the right way around. Yeah, it does do. I put that on to start with and let it dry. Then I put on, so I'm standing up and walking away from the camera. Then I put on liquid clear, which was in this little pot. And then I gave it a coat of this, which is mountain mixture. Okay, Bob Ross mountain mixture. Literally, this is the first tube I reached into the cupboard and grabbed. Um, it could have been blue, it could have been green, it could have been crimson, but I just reached in and I just had a tube of mountain mixture. This is an old one, and I just grabbed it and I just smeared it all over my painting. Okay, so literally, it was just a thin glaze of color, and just enough to tint my canvas a bluish tone, and then everything I did on top was white, 99% white, tiny little bit of cadmium yellow. Um, so it just got a little hint of that yellow in the wave there, but, but no more than a hint. You just want that kind of a little bit of a look. Okay. So that's that's kind of, I suppose I could put a seagull or two in here, couldn't I? Seagulls, they fly at night, apparently. I didn't know that, but... Let's put a little. Well, maybe the maybe these seagulls have got insomnia. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, the worst the worst seagulls for people to paint. What I call McDonald's birds. You know, you know the ones I'm talking about. Those really awful looking seagulls. Boy, I can't stand these seagulls. <laughs> so I turn them, I turn them into clouds. Okay, whatever I do, them I turn them into clouds. Okay, the seagulls I like to paint. Otherwise, I call them eyebrow seagulls. Do you imagine a pair of eyebrows? And I, and I use my little finger here as a prop, and I paint one eyebrow going like that. And I paint the other little eyebrow going like that. And I kind of have them crossing over so it looks like they got the head and tail. And if you don't like them, you rub them out and you do them again. There's a better looking one. And you can put a bunch of these on. There we go. How did that get on there? One, two, three, four. Maybe one more. Do I have an odd number? Okay. So they're little eyebrow seagulls. You can give the ends of their wings a little tip. Makes them look like they're wheeling from side to side. There's the in the head and so you can put them on then if you don't like them you can you can knock them out pretty easy okay but i think that's pretty much it for my seascape today i managed to take up an entire hour of your time so i thank you very much for for joining me tonight to watch me enjoy myself have fun painting um the very last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to just sign my painting here put my initials on it Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this Seascape demonstration. Um, if you've got questions, obviously, 
deep in there and I'll see if I can answer any of them. But have fun with seascapes. Um, they're not too hard. As long as you remember these basic sort of angles and shapes and, and, and have a nice sort of curl to them, they come together pretty good. So let me just zoom out again. Oops, there we go. Now, hopefully by the time I do another one of these live streams, I might be a little bit better equipped with cameras and the like. Um, and I won't be trying to trick my phone into believing it's a webcam. I'm still not in the right position here. There we go. Okay, so there it is. There is my. Oh, you're very welcome, Peter. I've enjoyed painting with you. Um, <laughs> put a big tree. <laughs> but, you know, I could put a little tree back here somewhere on an island, maybe, or the mast of a ship, maybe. Um, no, it's okay. I mean, I've really enjoyed painting with you tonight, and it's kind of it's kind of odd to paint and uh, to have nobody in person with me after teaching this sort of thing for twenty plus years. It kind of feels odd to be talking to myself, but you're there, and I appreciate your company. Hopefully, um, we'll see you again on another live stream. Um, you're, you're very welcome, Sasha. It was nice for you to join us. So I'm just reading some of the little little comments as they're coming in there. So it's been really, really lovely of you. So to say it's just gone, it's just gone nine o'clock. I think how's my tea going? Gosh, it's nearly empty, folks. As soon as that cup's empty, I have to stop. There's the answer. It's a bit like Dave Allen. If you remember Dave Allen, the comedian. When his whiskey glass ran dry, he stopped. So um, I'm out of tea, so I'm going to stop. So, <laughs> Peter, it's time for bed. You know, I've got to get my beauty sleep, and God knows I need it. <laughs> anyway, folks, thank you very much again for, for being with us tonight. Um, let's say, stay well, stay safe, and get your sleeve rolled up ready for your jab when it comes. I'm sure it will be a good thing for the for the world when we get vaccinated so but in the meantime stay safe and look after yourselves and um, i'll see you on the next painting so good night everybody bye